Pablo Bean Santos' artwork comprador is on display at the National Museum. It's a nylon canvas painting that expresses a strong negative feeling. Established in 1978, the year when the Philippines was still ruled by the Marcos regime. In the painting, two men can be seen passing and grabbing a large amount of money while reaching back as far as they can. As they try to drag the rope, they are laughing and unfairly taking advantage of those below them. The artist strategically utilized chromatic colors, rough angular lines, and strong diagonal elements throughout the entire composition to convey specific emotions in the artwork. The use of subdued colors suggests neutrality or simplicity, while rough angular lines and strong diagonals introduce a sense of tension, movement, and direction. This cohesive integration of visual elements contributes to the overall emotional impact of the piece. Because of the thick and crisp lines, this artwork provides a strong but negative mood. Additionally, the artwork depicts individuals fighting for their lives as one individual sits above them and asserts his superiority over by using his riches and power to control them. Politicians misuse their position of authority to intimidate defenseless individuals for justice and equality make an excellent example. The fact that this illness is incurable in our culture is disheartening. Since black and other gloomy hues predominate in this design, adding more colors would enhance the feeling of the cloth. The artist wants his audience to concentrate on the man in the middle. Therefore, diversity and concentration are key concepts. Diversity stems for the differences in the power structure. Another obvious idea that can be explained in this context is scale. The center man is larger than the other individuals, those who are tugging the rope. To deepen our understanding of Comprador, it employs social realism, which is an art style derived from European realism that aims to inform the audience clearly with the social critic of the circumstances of life of minorities or the working class in the 19th and 20th centuries and flourished predominantly during the 1920s and 1930s, a period of worldwide economic hardship, increased racial conflict, the international emergence of fascist regimes, and enormous optimism. Social realists drew metaphorical and realistic depiction of the masses, which included the working and lower classes, labor unions, and the politically disenfranchised. Ferdinand Marcos was the reigning president at the time Pablo Bayan Santos created this picture. The picture represents, as the name implies, a person operating within a nation who represents foreign groups involved in commerce, investment, or economic exploitation. The painting clearly shows between who belongs to the top class and who belongs to the lower class. It represents disparities in their colors, with the one above being more white or perceived as clean, and the one below painted with a darker tint that represents poverty. The two politicians, one from the Philippines and the other from the United States, profit of the labor of the workers by exploiting the Philippines' economic crisis at the expense of low-wage employees, despite the fact the labor force was the only export that could bring in foreign currency and allow the government to guarantee income for the nation at the low capital. Because of the people who are above the capitalist system taking advantage of those who are merely trying to get by, it is also perceived as chaotic and imbalanced. Through taking advantage of the poor, it is observed how the two men in brighter hues were successfully passing and grasping a significant amount of money with their arms, demonstrating how greedy they were and how far they sought money to be beyond reach. Their laughter comes from greening while unfairly taking advantage of others beneath them as they make an effort to grab the rope. On the contrary, the individuals listed below represent the Filipino labor force that is striving for a living. As they appear worn out and defenseless, the people below don't appear to be displaying many emotions. Strong diagonal poles, subdued color schemes, and thick angular lines all serve to depict their problems. This is a representation of the expulsion they experienced, where they were unable to speak negatively about the administration because they were forced to take all measures necessary to survive. The spaces utilized were realistically accurate for the people above to extend their arms and unwind, and compact for the illusion of how dense the spaces between the lower classes were. Furthermore, Paolo Bayan Santos's depiction of Comprador and social realism belonged to the so-called social realists who rose to prominence during the rise of nationalist fervor and student activity at the beginning of the 1970s. The harsh martial law rule was, in many respects, the furnace that developed Philippine social realism. 
it has been defined as the technique of utilizing art, particularly visual art, to draw attention to political and social issues. This enables us viewers to assess and evaluate a society's poverty, unfairness, and corruption. Also, this allows individuals to learn more about who is who in the government. This is a help message from the capital's lower system as an appeal for help or a cry of injustice and unfair treatment from the administration. The subject matter was intended to be an eye-opener for individuals of all classes to grasp diverse circumstances from various perspectives. As soon as we encountered the Comprador, one thing immediately came to our minds, the political systems and dynamics in the Philippines. The artwork is a thought-provoking piece that draws attention to the complex and challenging narrative it seeks to convey about the political struggles in the country, depicting the power dynamics and struggles of ordinary Filipinos against manipulation and oppression by those in authority. Unlike the traditional aesthetics of an art gallery, the Comprador creates a dark and unsettling atmosphere. Initially, we almost walked past it in the museum as it did not align with our individual preferences for conventionally attractive art. However, the piece effectively retained our collective attention by prompting contemplation and evoking a spectrum of emotions. Upon delving deeper, we realized that the deliberate use of visual elements including thick sharp lines and the dominance of dark colors accurately represents and reflects the disturbing context of the story behind the artwork. This resonates with the harsh political realities inherent in the historical context of the country. In essence, the Comprador serves as a poignant piece that, although lacking immediate warmth, captivates us with its depth and encourages us to collectively unravel the complex narrative it presents.